Autumn Leaves, one of the most well-known jazz standards. And if you study any music theory, you may have started with this one. I consider it kind of a ground zero jazz standard to help you understand some common chord progressions and things like that. But in this video, we're just gonna try to get a simple version of this chord melody style. So we could play the melody, or we could just play the chords. You may already know that for the song, but the most fun I think you can have on the guitar is when you put the chords and the melody together. But this is going to be relatively simple. We're going to use just a few kind of easy to play um, seventh chord shapes, and we're going to fit the chords in between the melody as we go. So we'll start out with a simple template for this, and then afterwards we'll talk about um, different ways that you could dress this up according to where you're at right now. But first let's check out this easy chord melody arrangement of Autumn Leaves. Let's check out some of these chords and how we can kind of vary it if you want to. So we're starting out with this shape, which we could say is coming from the D form. There's a major chord based on the D form. Here's a minor chord. We drop this note down, which is the root. There's the root there anyway. Drop this down two frets and we get a minor seventh chord. Some jazz players like to bend their finger backwards like that. That would make sense if you're trying to get a higher note. A little bit um, uncomfortable to me though. So let's play it this way with your index on the seventh fret, pinky on the ninth fret, then eighth fret with your middle finger, and then tuck your ring finger underneath the middle finger, eighth fret. So fret-wise, it's seven, nine, eight, eight. The reason we're playing this A minor seventh chord this way is that the first phrase of the melody ends on a C note, so this voicing of A minor seven has the C on top, so that's why we want it. Now here comes a D seven chord, so we can do this, barring the seventh fret, we're barring four strings, and we have our middle finger now on that C note. So we have A minor seven, D7. Then we're going to slide down here to a G major 7th this way. We're kind of barring the third finger. You could also do it this way if you like. Sometimes this feels better. Certainly it's, it's easier to get there quickly sometimes. So I'm playing the 5th fret of the 4th string, then 7-7-7 seven, 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 like that. Then we're going to bar it just like before, but instead of a dominant 7th chord, which would be on the 6th fret, your ring finger will play the 7th fret, and that is C major 7. So we have a minor 7, D7, G major 7, C7. Now we're going to go down one fret to F sharp on the fourth fret, and we have F sharp minor 7 plot 5. Then let's bar it just like before, and we have another dominant 7th chord, only this time that's B7. Now B7 wants to go to E minor, so we're going to end on just a full E minor chord, and in this case our melody is going to be a G note up here. Okay, one more time. So here's our, our chords. A minor 7, D7, G major 7, C major 7, F sharp minor 7 plot 5, B7, and then E minor with a G on top, because that's how the melody ends. So now let's look at that melody. We have this. We're just going to keep moving down to accommodate those chords that we need. So it's all very linear. Look, we're in the key of E minor. It's going to start on an E note and go up the scale, three notes, and then go jump up a fourth. And then it goes down to the next note in the scale, D, and does the same exact pattern. Three notes, and then a fourth up. And then go down here. It looks on the guitar, the way that I'm doing it, exactly the same. Two frets down. And then this last one is a little bit of the melodic minor scale. Open string, second fret, fourth fret, and then we go to that E minor with the pinky on top. Now the second ending of the A section is not going to go like that, E, C sharp, D sharp, G, it's going to go F sharp on the first string, A, G, and then open E. I put a C sharp in that chord just because 
an E minor six chord it sounds so cool and jazzy on if it's the one chord. Let's look at the B section real quick. I put a little triplet in here. The melody really just goes like this. E, D sharp, E, if you don't want to do this. Just trying to make things more interesting right there, but um, you can vary this so many different ways. So we're going. Now this next chord is an F sharp minor seven flat five like we played earlier, except it's down here. It looks a lot like A minor with an F sharp on top. Also could be called A minor six if you want, but in this case, we're gonna have to call it F sharp minor seven flat five because it's a two chord in the key of E minor and the two wants to go to the five. It's just a music theory thing. So there's B7 and then we have second fret, open second fret, and we're trying to get to an E minor with a G on top, just like the beginning. Then we go A minor as a bar. And now take, leave your ring finger down for this next D7. We're gonna play D7 this way. And again, the reason that the chords look the way that they do is because we need to get a certain note in the melody and we're trying to mix them together. So D7 with a D note, there's your D note. That'll be the highest note that we hear. Then we play that note all by itself. And we're gonna jump way up here to the 10th fret. And then we have G major seven that we played in the A section. Now for this one, what I like to do, I didn't put it on the PDF because it's kind of hard, but if you do this, that's a nice fuller way of playing that G major seven. Uh, it's the same exact chord. Instead of playing this G, the fifth fret of the fourth string, just jump down an octave and then use your pinky on that one. Not too hard, um, a big stretch, but you'll never probably have to stretch more than this. So it's a good thing to practice anyway. So here we went D, C, and then with the B, we play that G major seven. For the next one, we're gonna see a diminished seventh chord. So we're playing this shape moving it down three frets at a time. Uh, the frets are seven on the fourth string, eight, seven, eight. And whenever you play this shape, you can always move it three frets up or down, and you really have the same chord. It's a substitution for B7, so it'll resolve us to, to E minor if we wanted to end the song that way. Okay, but that's getting a little too hard. So we're playing what we could call A diminished seventh, down to the fourth fret, F sharp, down to D sharp diminished seventh, and now come all the way back and play this high C note. And now we need to play a B note again, but with an E minor chord. So there's a number of ways we could do this, but I did it this way. That might be one of the harder things to do because you have to bend backwards with your ring finger to get that. This is a minor ninth chord. That F sharp in there sounds real nice. If you don't want to do that, just do this maybe. Just play the low E string, that high B note, and then just grab the treble strings like this. And it's still going to sound correct. So we went like this. You could just go until you work up to this, if that's trouble for you. Now the next thing is admittedly a little bit weird. We're gonna play this shape, and then we go back to the shape we just did without having to do that stupid bar thing. That shape, then we move it down. So this is actually pretty easy. Let's go back to measure 22, and instead of playing this, let's play it this way just for the moment. Since that's one great way to play a minor ninth chord. I'm playing the seventh fret with my middle finger, stretch out to the fifth fret of the next string, then ring finger back on the seventh, and pinky on the seventh. So what's gonna happen in the sequence is going E minor nine, keep your pinky and your index finger and just drag the two in the middle down one fret. This is a dominant seventh sharp nine chord, an intimidating sounding name, but pretty easy to play, especially if we're already fingering this last one. So we do this one, we drag it down. Now just do it again down here, same shape I had in measure 22. That's a D minor nine, and then just drag the two fingers in the middle down, and that's it. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that's taking us to C major seven with an A note on top because that's the melody. So one more time back to measure 22. This is a pretty weird part. We need that high B note. We're gonna play the E minor nine like this. One, two, three, that's our E flat seven sharp nine. And then we go down to one, two, that's a D minor nine flat seven sharp nine to C major seven. Just gonna play these two notes, the lower notes of a, of a C chord, but with these two fingers so we can grab that A note on top. And then we're gonna drag their pinky down or whatever finger to G and then we play B7 and we're almost done. We scoot up one fret, that's a G on the third fret and then open B string and then let's strum an E minor of any kind that you want. I'm gonna put a C sharp down here or we could do the one we did earlier with C sharp an octave higher. Or you could do whatever you want. There's so many cool little voicings we could put in there. All right, so once you've got this chord melody arrangement under your fingers, let's just look at a couple things we can do to make it more interesting or make it more fun. So the arrangement went 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But you've got an entire measure there to do whatever you want. So what I would tend to do is to just, just randomly arpeggiate that chord. It makes it sound like more is happening and kind of keeps the, the momentum going. So you could go. A more rhythmic kind of groove going. So we've got this whole chord, we've got four strings and four fingers, let's use them all and go like this. Playing a kind of a bossa nova rhythm here. So notice I'm not playing such straight even quarter notes anymore. Or we could swing it with the same block chords going. If you're getting into classical guitar, you may have heard of this technique called tremolo. That's another cool thing that we could do here. Tremolo is basically when we play the same note a bunch of times on the same string. So we could go like this. So for that technique, I'm playing the classical tremolo, which is the thumb on whatever string other than the one you're doing tremolo on, and then your ring, middle, and index all evenly together. So I'm going thumb, ring, middle, index, thumb, ring, middle. I'm kind of doing the arpeggio with my thumb and the tremolo with my ring, middle, and index. So those are just a couple of ideas of how you can vary this. And that's the kind of thing you should think about in any arrangement that you do. Like, how can you make it easy to play for you, but also capitalize on some techniques that you already know that might not be in the arrangement, but you can insert them in there. So thanks for checking out this little arrangement of Autumn Leaves. If you need more help with it, in the link below, I've got the PDF and a few practice videos where you can work on just the chords, the fuller version of the chords to a metronome, as well as just the melody to a metronome, and then the arrangement that we did today also to a metronome. You can see the tablature scrolling to make sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time. And if you like this nylon string guitar stuff, check out my nylon string guitar guide where I go through all the techniques you're gonna need to know to play the nylon string guitar.